And now, the Crypt Keeper of Creepy, the provocative prince of the tweens, the nightmare from Neptune. It's Zabu Jard! <sighs> and, uh, you... You guys are You guys You guys are uh, friendly little creatures. You guys are my friendly little creatures. Just because you and I are far apart it doesn't mean I don't think about you and I don't love you. And I don't mourn the time that we're not able to spend together. You don't have to be with someone to to be their friend or their best friend or or anything like that. You can be friends with someone when you're a young youngster. Uh, and then when you guys are old, you guys can still, you still care about that person and the time you spent with them. Just because they're, um, just because they're, um, uh, far apart. So, um, sorry, one of the tenants just looked out their window. And I'm in front of their house, so that's pretty awkward. Not their, not their house, but their, their hotel. Um, you know, their apartment thing, their creature. But so, just because, um, yeah, you guys get it. You guys, get, you guys. It's we only we're only alive once or maybe one trillion times if the soul is actually eternal and immortal, which it pro which it probably is, right? So people will say YOLO, you're only alive once. Actually, it's probably my more like y YOLTA, you only live a trillion times. YOLATA, you only live a trillion times. YOLAT, instead of YOLA, YOLO, it's more like YOLAT. Because it's more like you only live a trillion times instead of one uh, once. But anyways, I mean, I think that's faggoty propaganda that they that they spewed into the Gen Z uh, generation of of people to make them more selfish. Yolo, do whatever you want. Go do go do the most uh, disgusting barbaric acts you can think of. Go do go do as take as many drugs as you can as you can do. Quick, 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 quick. Go, go, go. Quickly do a ton of ton do a million drugs right now. Do as much weed as you can, YOLO. When actually it's more like not it's actually more like YOLAT. It's possibly more like YOLAT. You only live a trillion times. Because the soul is um made it's it's from God and it's in in that and that means it's it's infinite and that it's immortal and it's un and so so this YOLO stuff is just is just communist uh, satanic propaganda. I, it always has been, and it always will be. And um, I forgot why I started talking about this, but you know we're apart now, but this life is short. And um, you know I think I'm gonna get some bath toys. Uh, well, I think I'm gonna get like a foot pump. So what you do with a foot pump is you you pump it with your foot, and it has a nozzle at the top. And you know I love taking baths. Actually, I've been taking bath like every day now. Um, I'm not kidding. Uh, and the way I'm doing that is actually really easy. You start with the shower, you have the faucet locked, and then it turns into a bath. And so I recommend you guys to try that as well. There are foot pumps you can get where you pump on the foot, and then uh, it shoots shower water, or in this case, used bathtub water that you used to take a bath already. And you're able to use that to, um, just to have a, a uh, non-electric hands-free um, faucet over you and I love baths and I should be in the bath more probably I think I think I maybe I probably should but we're all doing our best out here 
and um, yeah, so I'm trying to stay a little vigilant for the bike thieves. I don't want them to steal even more bikes, and for some reason, some people still park their bikes there, even after the four were stolen yesterday, so maybe the tenants don't know where to put their bikes, but um, I guess I'm going to have to watch and make sure that their bikes don't get stolen tonight, so I'm going to be parking here from now on, I guess, so that I can watch the bike area, which is weird because I, I don't park very far from this area in general, and I still didn't see any like crazy activity or hear any crazy activity. So it's possible at the time of the, 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 the stealing that I was inside the building somewhere or I was under the parking garage structure somewhere. Um, I don't know what time they stole the bikes. Maybe I just wasn't in the area at the time. Maybe I was in a different part of the complex or underground. Or maybe I was um, in the bathroom uh, jerking around. I mean, I go in the bathroom and I just sit in there for a while. And I watch YouTube videos that I download that I bring to work. <clears throat> and, um, um, but anyway, somehow I didn't see this criminal organization stealing these bikes yesterday. And it was a big uh, plan, scheme, because they jumped the fence, bolt cutters, threw the bikes over. I imagine it wasn't super quiet. So how did I miss that exactly? I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure. Um, how I missed that. And I do feel for the tenants who lost their bikes to these disgusting criminal faggots who are homeless pieces of shit. And they go around stealing people's stuff that they work hard for. And they sell it to buy more fentanyl or whatever the hell they do with it. I don't know what they do. But it's pathetic and it's unfortunate. Um, so... I just have to make sure that I try not to get shot, but also try not to let people steal the bikes tonight. If the bikes get stolen tonight, I imagine they'll definitely fire me. Um, I mean, I don't know about definitely, because I do have to patrol sometimes, so hopefully they don't steal when I'm patrolling in a different area. But anyways, um, yeah, so um, I guess we'll see what happens. Um, I don't care if I get fired, I guess, kind of, but I'm actually just more grumpy about the ticket still. So, I, I hope that I don't have to pay $300 for a stupid faggot parking ticket. You know what's ridiculous is these cops sit out in a suburb and they wait for someone to roll a stop sign. Like, that's, that's literally their whole job and just to, like, get the city more money. It has enough money, by the way. So our taxes for these... Cops who do nothing, it's just to give me tickets for rolling a stop sign too fast. And then somehow that's benefiting society at all. It's not. It's not benefiting society or me at all. At all. At all. So just to be able to continue participating in this cursed faggot, faggot society that we're all living in. Because none of us are living in communes or growing our own food or eating our own chickens or rabbits or things. So we're all in a slave system brainwashed faggoty slaves in a communist faggy uh, system and um, yeah ordered a uh, another I ordered another Jewish book because I finished this other one that I been reading in my car I hope this new one is good and I learned something from it um I should probably read some uh, Zohar today to get my mind into a better place. The Zohar is a book written a long time ago with uh, secret instructions about how to unlock the mysteries of the Torah. Written by uh, a couple of very smart uh, dudes, I think. So that's basically what it is. It's a very famous book. Um, a lot of the Jewish books that are good are very expensive. Apples in the Orchard, very expensive. All the Zohar books, very expensive. Um, what else? I can't think of the other ones, but a lot of the good Jewish books are, unfortunately, too expensive. Very, very expensive. Why is that? I don't know, but they are. So, yeah. I got a cheap one, but I don't know if it's good. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Hopefully it's Jewish, I don't know.
it's just uh it's about the kabbalah but some people talk about the kabbalah and they don't even talk about the jewish stuff behind it so i'm trying to look for more of a uh, kabbalistic jewish book in that uh, regards um yeah <clears throat> You know what's crazy? It's actually not that crazy. I think a step forward that we could possibly do and um, I'm not saying you have to give up your phone of course but if you have a computer or in my case a laptop what we could do is we could just put the laptops in our closets or the computer in our closet or whatever you have and then that way you wouldn't have a uh, distracting screen for, well, about 99% of your entire life for right now. And then, yes, you'd have a phone. You could still watch YouTube on your phone or whatever it is you do on your phone. But I think simply having a phone instead of a computer would um, lighten the load of whatever's distracting us, which is technology, technology is distracting us from something, from anything, from a conversation with ourselves. I know that sounds deep and gay, but it's true. What about silent meditation? None of us do that. What about nonviolent communication? Not enough people do that. We're all working on ourselves in interesting ways. I think an interesting way to work on ourselves, especially if we have a computer with a problem with computers, such as myself, is to simply remove the computer out of the equation. Put it in your closet. If you have to go online, you have your phone. You can do whatever you need to do on your phone. It doesn't mean you always need to be... I'm trying to think of what I even use my computer for. Of course, I use it to make cartoons, which I would... That would be unfortunate to stop making cartoons for all of us. Mostly me and you. But besides that, what do I even use it for? Um, it's my coworker honking. He's leaving. Um, uh, I was waiting for him to leave, honestly. But anyways, he's he's a nice old man. But, um, what is it? What was I saying? Uh, yes, so, frick, what was I just talking about? <laughs> I got distracted by the honking. Yes, what do I use my, what do I even use my computer for? Um, well, you guys have heard of the hub, right? It's a, uh, and I mean, obviously that would be a good place to get away from that sort of stuff, if you catch my drift. So, no fappers out there. I think getting rid of your computer is a good idea. And you're thinking, well, I can just use my phone, which, you know, people can do that. That's true. But, um, but still, I don't know. If you get rid of your computer, what do I do with my computer? I play multiverses on it, video game, and I make cartoons. And I watch a billion YouTube videos. Instead of doing those things with a computer, if I only had a phone and I put my computer in the closet, um, in the closet, for example, um, then, um, sorry, people are driving by. Then with my free time, I would be able to go on more walks, which I'm trying to do that right now. I, I, I've been trying to go on one walk a day, but I, I went on two the other day, so I'm trying to bump that up to two walks a day at least. Two walks a day. Um, I'm trying to get up to two walks a day. Uh, mostly just exercising and stretching as well. Put that on there as well. Uh, I listen to music with my phone on my walks. So I use the phone for music still, of course. I mostly have my phone on airplane mode pretty much 99% of the time. Um, I feel bad not calling my mom, so I try to call her as much as I can. 
and uh, that's about it. And um, what else could you do with your computer off? You could read books if you have books. Otherwise, you can order some on eBay and you can read those ones. And then you wouldn't. Uh, you can do that. You can try gardening or raising chickens or something or whatever the hell people do. Um, so maybe I'll try that. You know, maybe I'll just try that. Maybe I'll try um, a week or a couple days or a week or whatever putting the computer away. I doubt I'll do this, but it would be cool if I did. I'll see if I do. Kind of reminds me of rehab. Except I had a computer at my at most of my rehabs. Some of them I did not because they would not allow, allow that, I think. But if I put the computer away for a while, um, I don't know. Then I would be able to... What would I do? You could do anything without a computer. You can paint. You can draw. You can paint. You can try your hand at carpentry. I, I don't know. I don't know what people do without a computer. I'm trying to figure that out. I have to think of things that people do without a computer. Um... I have to think of things. Maybe I could try doing that. Maybe I could try being more of a non-computer boy um, for a while. See how that goes. Just see how that goes, you know? What would my day look like? What would my schedule look like? Without a computer, you could just do more stuff with your hands. Your body and your brain, your mind. You try the meditation stuff to work on yourself, you know, through meditation and stuff like that. And you can do that with a phone. You can follow along on YouTube meditations and stuff. You could exercise, walk more, bicycle more, for he heaven's sake. Um, you could do all sorts of stuff, I imagine, without a computer to, without a computer to tie you down. When you're away from your computer, you're thinking, oh man, I need to get home so I can go back on my computer. So that I can doom scroll on Twitter. I have to do something all day on my computer. I have to get home. I miss my computer right now. I have never brought my computer to this new job that I have. Not new, but this current job. I used to bring my computer even to my last job sometimes, or most of the time. This current job, I have not brought the laptop here I think, I don't probably not even once, maybe one time, but I don't even think I used it. Um, so this is the only time where I'm away from the computer is when I'm at work. Um, which is 16 hours a week. And, um, and, um, During that 16 hours, I'm stuck at work. There's not much I can do there. I'm stuck at a shitty job that I don't, that I'm not super fond of. It's just a job. And uh, I get speeding, I get stopped, I get police tickets when I drive to work. You know, what a joke. What an absolute sham of a joke. But, um, if I, if I was at home, and I, and I, and I didn't have a computer, I could do... I don't know. I think I would be outside more. I think I'd try to be outside a bit more and just do outside stuff, whatever the hell that is. Go to a park or something. I don't know. Um, I've never been to the library in my town. Not not even once. I've never even been to this library, library once in this current town that I live in. Um, maybe I could go there. I don't know. It's a bit of a drive. It's about a five-minute drive or around there, five-minute five drive or so the library um yeah so maybe i'll try doing that and i'll let you guys i'll let you guys know how it goes um because when i think about it i think computers just don't help me i think they just distract me and i don't even think they help me at all maybe you guys feel similar I love making cartoons. I love reading your comments on my cartoons. That's about, that's the only thing I like about computers right now. 
And multiverses is a little fun sometimes too, as a video game. But it's not necessary, it's not required, it's just a, it's just a stupid game, you know? It's just a, it's just a pointless fighting game, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't really mean anything to me. Um, yeah, I've already wasted all my life being on a computer. And um might be interesting to try uh, not being on one for a while and see how it goes. Just see how it goes, you know? And, um, I don't know, maybe I would get bored. I imagine I would, but you never know. So, yeah, there you go. Let's uh, just think about trying something like that in your own in your own mind, in your own life. Think about how that would go for you. Think about what you would do, you know, without a computer. Oh my gosh, maybe you would watch TV. I don't know. <laughs> Probably, probably some people would watch TV, but anyways, that's not that's not the point. You're not supposed to go from a computer to a TV. You're supposed to go to a computer to anything else, to anything besides a screen. Really, I think is the main goal. Going from a computer to anything besides another screen. Screen is one letter away from scream. Okay, maybe it's two letters, but. These screens are just, they're just all over the place, man. It's just, it's just too many screens. Too many cooks and too many screens, so. I think instead of no fap, people should try no screen. It's something I just thought of and just invented right freaking now. And it's like no fap, except it's even, it's even harder than that. It's no screen. There's no more screens. How are you going to fap without a screen? Boom. I solved world peace. I solved world hunger. I solved the porn crisis. I solved the fap crisis. Simply take away all the screens. And now the world's a better place. Look at that. I'm a genius. How am I so smart? How am I solving world crime? How am I solving world time and chime and all this freaking crazy gas crud stuff? The solution has been in front of our eyes the entire time. It's simply called no screen. And that's all you have to think about. Something crazy. You guys know how I always say God's talking to me about stuff sometimes. Um, man, the sky's pretty. I can see the orange um, beams coming off the sun. I th yeah, I can see the big orange beams coming off the sun. And they are massive beams, I think. Unless my eyes are playing tricks on me, but... The sky is pretty. The clouds look like pieces of poop or snakes or something. But it's a very, very beautiful sky this morning at 6 in the morning. Extremely beautiful sky. Like, really, really beautiful. But anyways, um, I got that stop by the cops today for the speeding for the stop sign ticket. And then I open up the Jewish Zohar reading today for this week's lesson. And it's literally about... Uh, judges and police officers and the chapter is called I don't remember I think it's shot thin or something like that I don't really know but just thought that was interesting um, yeah I mean that's crazy right is that crazy or what so I've been I've been up by a bar, parked by the bicycles all night keeping my eye on it I haven't seen the bicycle thieves come by all night, but uh, I'm ready to go home in an hour and a half. Uh, pretty bummed about the uh, ticket still, I guess. I did like, I tried to do like meditation tonight in the car and stuff. Um, it's unfortunate. Imagine a society, if you will, where there's a police officer hiding behind a bush in a safe suburb, waiting for someone to to try to not stop at a stop sign long enough so that they can give them a three hundred dollar ticket. In this economy, in America, in a suburb, what a fucking joke, dude! What a joke! It's all such a joke. Oh, you didn't stop at the stop sign long enough. Here's a two hundred seventy dollar ticket. Thank you. 
I will now give the ta the ticket tax money to the city. We will now give it to our mayor who will fly to Epstein Island next week. Thank you for your taxes. We are keeping you safe by making sure people stop at the stop signs. Giving them $300 tickets. This will show them. At 11 p.m. as I hide behind a bush in a safe suburb, I will catch people driving too fast on a Friday night at 11 p.m. and give them $300 parking tickets. I know he's just doing his job, I guess, but... It's just, it's absolutely disgusting <laughs> that that's a thing, you know? Ah, oh, it's just insane, man. It's just insane. That's how I feel about stop sign tickets. That's how I feel about them. That's how I feel. I don't get it. I still, I still can't get over how... The one day a week I come down here, the most evil thing happens, and a bunch of homeless people steal a bunch of the people's bikes who live here on my shift during eight hours of the whole week, basically, you know? Why didn't that happen on anyone else's shift? I pray for every one of my shifts. And the most crazy... Stupid crap happened on my shift. <sighs> That's crazy, man. What the heck's going on? What the heck's up with that? Just, it just, just, it just felt pointless to even come to work tonight because if I get a two hundred seventy dollar ticket, then I have to, I make like two hundred forty bucks a night. So I'm literally just going to work to pay off a useless ticket. So what's the point of even going to work if you're just working to pay off a ticket for two? And I don't, I still, I don't even make enough to pay off the whole ticket. Because if I only make two hundred forty dollars a night, and the ticket is two hundred seventy dollars, then I'm not even covering the cost of a whole ticket with an eight-hour workday. Figure that one out. I mean, that's just fucking retarded. Um, there's this mountain by my work that looks like a giant human face head. So I'm pretty convinced that it's like a giant human that's laying in the ground. And when I say giant, I mean like... Really freaking massive. Probably like... I don't know. The face, the head and face alone is probably like... A couple miles long or something. Or like five or... 10 miles or 150 miles. I don't know how to gauge a mountain's width here, but trust me, it's a freaking giant mountain and it looks like a giant human face. So I don't know what's up with that, but... I mean, every mountain could be a giant human. Probably. Probably is. And all these trees... I don't know what these trees are. Maybe they're facial pubic hairs or something from giants that are underneath the ground. How do you explain trees uh, in everywhere? How do you guys explain trees? <sighs> oh, man. Uh, no fab update. I uh, made it 17 days and uh, kind of uh, lost and now I'm kind of sleepy. You know, people doing podcasts, people using social media, people writing on Facebook, people doing anything on the internet, they're giving more gay power energy to AI. The internet is one gay big experiment to control everyone by having them write and say all their thoughts and ideas on the internet. And then now the government has control of all those thoughts and ideas and they're training their AI models on real people's social media posts and real people's vlogs, podcasts, blogs, books. Now they know how everyone thinks. Somebody has a thought, they write it down on their social media. 
Someone just farted. They write it down on their social media. Now they have gay ass web camera, webcam control in people's house. They're looking at people through their cameras. They're looking at people through their motorized faggoty little vacuums. You know, the vacuum cleaners that move around the house. Those have cameras. Those are watching people have sex. Those are watching people farting. Those, now they have the ring doorbell cameras. Those are watching people. Before you knew it, now there's cameras everywhere. Everybody's writing down every single thought that they have on their social media. Everyone's saying every thought that they have on their podcast. That's this one. And um, now they've successful, successfully gotten everyone to be a slave to technology and a screen of some kind all the time. You can't get in your bank account without your faggoty phone now. And you need two-step verification, verif, verif, verification, 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 it's kind of a stretch, verification, you can't get into your bank account, you can't get into your Uber Eats account, you can't get into your, um, um, your, what else, I don't know, you, you, you can't do anything now without the internet, and without a cell phone. The best course of action would be to throw these phones into the river nearby and join a commune, grow your own food, have a real life away from a screen. But none of us are doing that. Not a lot of people are doing that. I don't know if you've noticed. There's not a ton of people breaking away from the chains of the satanic hell freak show of this control freak commie society. That uh, everyone's entwi- intertwined in. This 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 life is too short to be mean and argue with people, to get to get heated and yelling, and turn into a fire of hate, and come and and fire and anger towards your fellow man or woman, especially women, because women. <sighs> Sometimes their brains piss you off. Sometimes men's brains piss you off. But, um, you know, it's too short to not call your mom every day. It's too short to not be kind every day. It's too short to not try your best every day. It's too short to. Not help and inspire others every day. It's not. It's too short to not do something every day. It's too short to not go on a walk or two every day. It's too short to uh, not follow your gay little dreams every day. Whatever your gay little dream is. Um, that's what I think. That's 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 part of what I think in my head. It's a little bit of a part of what I think in my little fucking head. Oh, yeah. You know. I got um, I got upset by drunk, drunk people. People who are high every day. People who are drunk every day. People. I'm a very sensitive man, boy. I can get set off by the simplest of things. That's why I try to stay away from human beings because talking to them, I I'm I'm too I have too thin skin, thin skin. I don't know how people deal with that. I'm working on it, I guess. I'm trying you just have to remember, if somebody says anything to you, just remember in your head, they're fucking nothing. I, I heard that advice lately, and I like that. Sometimes you hear some advice that you like. And the advice that I heard lately was, if somebody says anything to you, good or bad or whatever, just remember, especially bad in this case, right? Just remember they're fucking nothing. They're absolutely fucking nothing. So, I don't know. There you go. That's my advice to you. And I think maybe it's helping out with my own thoughts towards others if somebody says something rude of you critical of you evil of you evil toward you 
something evil about you, evil about someone you care about or something, just brush it off. Remember, that person is fucking maggot food in like 50 or 60 or probably even 20 or, year, or even 5 or 10 years or 2 years. That person's going to be dirt, maggot food, shit in the ground, maggot shit, trash, faggot. Sorry, guys, but... um. Just remember, you know, we're all we're all going to be maggot food eventually. Just, it's really not a big deal. We're going to be worm food in a couple of years, 20 years, one year, two year, five year, 30 years. We're going to be feeding. We're going to be a very tasty course for a family of worms. They're going to come into your coffin because they can sneak in if you're not cremated into cum cream. A family of hungry little worms, a mom, a mom and dad, and a daughter and a son, little worm. That's Wormy Junior, Wormy Senior, Wormetta, and Wormliet. That's the whole family. There's a nuclear family of cute little, adorable, living little, baby little worms. And it's a heterosexual family of worms. They're not some fag, LG family of worms. So it's a mom, dad, and a daughter and a son, okay? And they're going to sneak into your... And they're hungry, because World War III is going on. They're hungry little worms. They're going to sneak into the graveyard cemetery where your mom buried you. And they're going to go into your coffin. And or they're going to, maybe someone you don't like. They're going to go into their coffin. And Wormy Jr. is going to say, Dad, I'm so hungry. Can we eat this? And Wormy Sr. will say, Bon Appetit, my son. And then you will be feasted on by a family of worms. And they'll call their neighbors. They'll say, Bob, <laughs> Mr. Bobby Worm, get over here. We found a huge barbecue of this freaking guy and we're eating his dick and we're eating all of his body couldn't get in here it's a feast for us worm types of creatures creatures of worms and they have just your body becomes a huge party for a huge barbecue beach party for a bunch of worms it's called worm is worming man 2030 instead of burning man it's worming man 2030 and you're eaten by a bunch of worms and they have a great time eating you and that's it Okay, um, so don't worry about other people who say mean things. They're nothing. They're just worm food in a couple of years. Don't even worry about it. That's just my advice. You know, pray for yourself and pray for others if you want, but don't worry about evil things that people might say to you. The only thing that the evil inclination can do, which is kind of like the Jewish version of Satan within all of us, is say things to you. The only thing that the evil inclination inside of you can do to tempt you or to to destroy you at all is say things, say words. That's all it knows how to do. That's all it can do. Um, that's what I heard a rabbi say, and I liked I liked that. He's well, he's like my favorite rabbi. And um, if you're worried about raping your own soul. Don't worry about that. Your soul comes from God. It's a part. It has God in your soul. It's a holy, godly part of you. Your soul is from God. And you cannot contaminate that as something that is from perfect, godly, holiness. You cannot contaminate or rape or hurt your soul because you cannot because it is it's it's of God you cannot you cannot hurt it and destroy it you can never uh, touch it like that if you guys are worried oh I've damned my soul I've hurt my soul I've broken my soul it you it's not it's not possible it's 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 invulnerable it's impenetrable it's indestructible it's per it's in it's it, it you know what I mean some people worry about that. Some people worry they're going to burn in a lake of fire because they're praying they're not they're doing something wrong. They're praying to the they're praying to the wrong god. They're doing something wrong. It's like I, I it's like I say, do you really think that if you pray to your, your father in heaven, he's going to forsake you and say and say and say, well, you should have actually prayed to my son. You shouldn't. You actually shouldn't have prayed to me. You actually should have prayed to my son instead. And that's actually where you went wrong. Actually, right there, because yeah, I guess I love you, but look, 
you messed up. You prayed to the wrong. You prayed to. You shouldn't pray to me. I told you. You definitely should have prayed to my son. You should, should have done this. Should have, should have done that. Um, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Um, so you know, just <sighs> and I am at work. I got. I'm halfway done. For tonight, and I gotta come back tomorrow. Unfortunately, man, the weeks go by fast, don't they? They go by really fast, and I don't really particularly particularly do anything all week. A couple of cartoons here and there. I've made eight videos in the last seven days. Eight of them. You heard that right? Feels like I should be making eight hundred videos per week. Eight is such a tiny amount. Such a tiny microscopic penis amount. Micro penis amount. Um, but what can you do? I've had a broken mouse for the last one or two years. I can't stand it. I'm just screwed. I can't get a working mouse. And so it, it, it makes me not want to make art sometimes with a broken mouse because it does, it just, it just doesn't. Um, Yeah, I'm just I'm just in my room most of the time. I'm gonna be on a podcast very soon. I will uh, upload the podcast on here, or uh, I guess maybe I'll upload it here or I'll put it somewhere. I'll put a link to it. It's on a famous-ish conspiracy guys channel. This is big news. Wow, this is huge news. I'm going to be on John LeBon's podcast. Spoiler alert, coming up soon. I'm very, I guess I'm very excited to be on his podcast. He seems like a very nice little young, tiny little microscopic Australian man, boy, creature. Seems like a very nice little creature. And um, I don't know what we're going to talk about or what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to explain to him my thought process, process on thoughts and cartoons and things like that. Special sort of mysticism points of view. Uh, very fabulous and creative and distracting amazing things what's up with all the hundreds of 9-11 cartoons you've made jer I, i'm sure that's he's probably going to ask that and i'm gonna have to come up with some sort of hanky panky doodly do wazzy woo uh, you know some sort of wahoo yahoo dinky trinky crinkly creature sort of answer type responses australian man's random ass questions about my cartoon animation artwork and um, I imagine uh, I'll come up with a great response, like, oh, wait, what's a 9-11 again? Something like that. Um, but you know, I am excited to be on his podcast. He's a big he's a big guy in the conspiracy world. You can look him up. And, um, you know, I'm kind of into that stuff. I'll be on it because, you know, I'm obviously, you guys probably know that. You guys probably have noticed that. Um, and yeah, some of it probably get, ends up in my cartoons, maybe some of the conspiracy stuff or at least the 9-11 stuff. I don't know, but, um, I got to think of what to, uh, what to say to, uh, yeah, what to talk about. Um, I got to take off three days of work this month, man. And so I got to figure out how to pay the rent, uh, next month if I'm taking off three days of work. Because I gotta go do stuff. I gotta go up and uh, say hello to some people that I'm related to. And to do that, I have to take off three days of work. And I'm gonna see my favorite dog in the entire universe of all dogs. She's my favorite dog. I love this dog more than anything. More than anything. I love this dog more than people love breathing. I love this dog more than people like eating ice cream. I love this dog more than people love drinking soda. I love this dog more than people like having sex. This is the perfect, amazing dog. Uh, maybe some of you guys understand. I don't own a dog, really. I live with two dogs. Um, but they're not my dogs. But I'm going to go see my favorite dog of all time, of all creation, of all dogs. The most perfect dog ever. And her name is Sophie, of course. And um, she's a uh, 
what's it called? A, a Maltese poodle. And I don't have a dog of my own. I don't have a child of my own. I don't have a wife of my own. But um, I do love this dog. She's an amazing, perfect, great dog. Great little dog. And she loves me as well. She, I can tell she likes me as a human person. And because she's technically like my sister, basically, this dog. And I, you guys wouldn't get it unless you guys, like, have a dog. Then I think maybe some people who own dogs are like, oh, I love my dog more than freaking... I guess that's how people feel about their children, right? I don't have any kids, but I imagine that's probably how people feel about their kids. That's probably how I feel about this dog. It's just an amazing dog. Uh, just a great, fun, happy little puppy dog. I could talk about it for the rest of all time, and I would. I might start a second podcast where I just talk about the dog all the time. Call <laughs> and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that, but I could. Because she's just a perfect dog. She's a great dog. She's the coolest dog, she's the cutest dog, she's the funniest little dog, she's the perfect little dog ever. She's the best dog, better than your dog, way better than your dog, whoever's listening to this. She's about a billion times better than your dog. And she loves me, and I love that little pup, and she's the greatest pup ever. And I probably have to have her cryogenically frozen just to make sure she never dies, because she's the greatest pup ever, who ever lived. This is the greatest dog who's ever been born and ever will be born. I'm dead serious about that. So, um, I I'm, I guess probably you guys would probably say that about your pets as well, maybe. If you wouldn't, then... Maybe you own a cat and you don't really care about cats because they just shit in their litter box and you just kick them around like a football. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. <sighs> that sort of shit. So, But that's how it is. So I'm very excited to see this dog. I actually had a dream about this dog two days ago. I have se- I probably have several dreams about this dog. She's just I love this dog so much. I had a dream about her like last night. I literally had a dream about her. But she wasn't the main part of the dream. Okay, let me tell you about my dream last night. This was a crazy ass dream. People say, "Are you lucky? Do you feel lucky? You have amazing, weird dreams all the time." Jerry I say, "Yes, I've always had been a dreamer. I've always had probably more dreams than anyone in the entire universe combined. I've had more dreams than you by about a trillion percent. I've had more dreams than everyone you know combined. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. I've always been a dreamer, and I've always been a schemer, and never been a worker, never been a. Um, I have been a jerker. If you catch my drift, but." My dream last night, I'm in this theme park, and I love climbing stuff, so I get, I climb on top of this broken roller coaster, and I start climbing all over this bro- broken roller coaster. I climb down to the ground, so I brought Dr. Pepper with me to work, that's all I brought for lunch, Dr. Pepper and some water, and, um, You guys like Dr. Pepper, right? That's all I got. At home, I got uh, Coke and Dr. Pepper. That's all I have um, to drink. And I have some Capri Suns. And a whole bunch of uh, Sparkle Waters. I have some grape juice. I think that's about it. You know, I haven't had tea. I haven't had hot tea in a while. I know some of you guys like drinking tea. I actually haven't. uh, Anyways. I climb down, I'm on the ground, I look up, and there's this, this roller coaster is all broken, you know, it's, you know, it, it just looks like pieces of it are, you know, not put in place correctly and stuff, and then I, and then I have my headphones in, because, you know, when I'm walking around in real life, I always have my headphones in, listening to music, and I look around, there's this guy running towards me, and it's a security guard, you know, I'm a security guard, and he says, get down on the ground, or I'll fucking tase you, man, I'll fucking tase you, and I take out my headphones, I'm like, what do you, wait, what, what do you want me to do? He said, get down on the ground, I'm going to tase you. And so I'm like, okay, okay. So I lay down on the ground. I'm thinking, I should have just ran away, but whatever. So I lay down on the ground, and this, this security guard comes up, and he puts this thing into the top of my neck and sedates me. Uh, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was like a, a patch or, no, it was probably like a, a, a needle or something. I don't know. He puts something into my neck, and it puts me to sleep, sedates me, totally right. So I wake up. I'm in this small office room on like a two or three story building or something. There's a whole bunch of people in the room with me, older people, 40s, 50s, probably, yeah, probably like 40s and 50s. 
and uh, they're all eating salads and stuff. There's like food uh, laid out, and I just there's a guy next to me, like you know, forty or fifty. And I turned to him. I'm like, uh, "Excuse me, uh, where where am I?" And he said, "Oh, you're in the moving, you're in the uh, the moving center for the uh, uh, the county jail where we're, we're going to figure out where to put you." And I said, "Oh, okay." And then uh, I woke up, and that was that's pretty much it. That was it. Um, that was my dream last night. Why? What a weird, crazy dream. What did it mean? I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it meant. But um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, so, yeah, in case you guys didn't figure it out, I do, I, I upload podcasts on here, like, every Sunday. Um, so, yeah. So get pumped. Get pumped when Sundays are on the corner, start getting fucking pumped. Whoa, news, I would jar the fucking podcast, I'm fucking pumped. I'm getting pumped. I'm getting pumped and dumped. I'm an incel who gets pumped and dumped. Why don't women love my dick? I'm pumped and dumped. I'm Elliot Gorger. I'm Elliot Berger. Okay. <laughs> I I keep getting pumped and dumped. Okay, you know, I've been doing um, stretching every day. Not today. I got lazy today. But I've been trying to do stretching every day. I'm trying to get extremely flexible. And I I, I recommend it. I, li- I like it, I think. I, I, I like it. I recommend it. I think we can all become contortionists if we all start working on it right now. So if you listen to this podcast, start stretching constantly as hard as you can. We will uh, we will be neat contortionist creatures together. I think we something we should start doing. Um, so that's my advice to you because I think you'll like it, especially if you're bored and you're bedridden all the time like me. So I think you definitely should give it a shot. Hell, you can even stretch in your bed if you want to. I'm not even kidding. There's there's stretches you can do in your bed. Seriously. Um, oh, but I have been waking up with sore backs because of the stretching. I'm not kidding. I, I, I'm stretching my back a lot and it's starting to rape my back. But that's good because um, it also, stretching increases your pain tolerance. So you'll be able to take on more pain if you want. <laughs> So that's cool too. You're becoming invincible Superman by stretching your um, muscles. You're feeling less pain. That's pretty effing cool if you think about it. So I recommend it. So, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Try it. Give it a shot. Try it out. Um. Why is it that every movie I watch now has a Jewish uh, family in them? I don't mean the, I don't mean the producer. I don't mean the actors. I mean literally, there's a scene in like every movie now where it's like a family of Jewish people with yarmulkes on, sitting around a dinner table, eating. Uh, why is that in every movie now? Somebody explain it to me. It's never like. I I think it's like it's it's almost never like a. Christian family or Muslim family or whatever. It's always a family of Jews now. In the new Knuckles movie, that happened. In the movie Drugstore June, that happened. I could go on and on. Every movie now has a stupid gay nigger scene where it's a family of people with yarmulkes on eating dinner. What's going on? What's the point? What's the purpose of that? What's what's up with that? Someone let, Someone explain it to me. Because... I know the people making these movies don't 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 care about God and they don't believe in God and they don't they don't like God. I know they don't like God. Mm-hmm. So why are they putting all these stupid scenes in their gas little faggy movies where it's people in yarmulkes eating dinner and then the main the main character like Knuckles will come and be like, "Hey, what are you guys doing? I'm Knuckles. I don't chuckle. I'm a red echidna from the planet Naribu. Nazebo." Zebo the Clown from Are You Afraid of the Dark? That was the best episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark. Zebo smoked cigars. He lit his circus tent on fire with his cigar. That's how he died. Look up Zebo the Clown. Are You Afraid of the Dark? A lot of you guys didn't experience the 1990s. You have to look up that episode. It's a great episode. I recommend it. I was looking up the birthdays of adult film actresses the other day. And I swear I'm not making this up. 
one of them, I only looked up a few of their birthdays, like three or four of actresses, okay? I'm calling them actresses. We all know they're prostitutes, okay? I get it. But I looked up the birthdays of, like, literally, like, two or three. Maybe just, like, maybe even just two. Like, two. I'm not kidding. Like, two uh, actresses the other day. Like, two or three. And one of them had the same exact birthday, same exact day, and same exact year as my biological sister. I'm not kidding. My biological sister. Same day, same year. And that particular actress also looks like me because she's a blonde and white and stuff like that. That's what I look like. I look like a blonde white person. But... So I already know that God or the angels or whoever is trying to tell me, like, look, these people in these in all these satanic movies or whatever, these like these are these are victims and these could literally be your family members, you know. So that's literally I think what God was trying to tell me because they had the same exact birthday as a relative of mine. And that's pretty bizarre when you think about it, because that's only a one in three hundred sixty-five, sixty-five degree, uh, uh, one in three hundred sixty-five, uh, three hundred percent uh, chance, a chance, one out of three hundred sixty-five chance. Um, and actually, it's even lower than that because you have to get the year right as well. You know, I think, but, um, but that's pretty freaking crazy, right? I mean, that's pretty dang crazy. Um, I could only looked up like two or three birthdays and then boom, right. There was right there. I'm like, wait, this birthday looks familiar to me. And sure enough, cause I know pe I remember my family members birthdays, I think. Yeah, I think I remember them. I remember my own. And, uh, I mean, is that not fucking crazy? I think that's pretty crazy. Um, so I already know. I know what God's trying to tell me. I'm like, I get it. I know. And yet here I am looking up birthdays. What's good? What's going on? <laughs> and what's going on with the... See, I mean, people don't believe in God. Well, I mean, Jan, I was going to bring up Jan. I mean, Jan believes in a God. He's just agnostic. But a lot of people are agnostic or atheist or whatever. I mean, I see all these coincidences all the time because I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in God and angels talking to me all the time. And there's no such faggoty thing as coincidences ever. And so I see something like that. I'm like, oh, God. People, atheists or brainwashed uh, faggies would look at that and be like, oh, that's a weird coincidence. Okay, time to... I don't even know what people do all day. Time to watch the new episode of The Bachelor. I mean, I, I, I mean that's what that's some people do that. So. I mean, that's just crazy. Is that not crazy? That's crazy. Doors creak and the tombstones quake. Spooks come out for a swinging wake. Happy haunts materialize and begin to vocalize. Grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize. When the moon climbs high on the dead oak tree, spooks are awake for the midnight spree. Creepy creeps with eerie eyes start to shriek and harmonize. Grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize. Now don't close your eyes and don't try to hide for a shilly spook may sit by your side shrouded in the depths disguise they pretend to 
terrorize grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize while the ghouls begin to shed their skin and demons shake their bones a banshee sails into the night and sing their frightful tone. <sighs> when you hear the knell of a requiem bell, where glow screams where Spirits dwell, restless bones, ethereal eyes, rage of spooks of every size, grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize when the crypt. Doors creak and the tombstones quake. <sighs> Grim grinning girls come out to socialize. <laughs> Has anyone else noticed how often people say, gee, damn? I'm talking about G-O-D, damn. People say that all the time. And uh, it's not good. I think that's that's the thing that... That's the word that grosses me out the most here when people say that. People who say they're basically saying like, Oh, I hate I hate God. I'm going to say this word now. Because damn him. That's why like... When people say that word, that's... I mean, I'm like... I, I cringe. And this is coming from a jer. You're saying even jer cringes at something like that? Jer's making freaking Among Us fart cartoons, and this guy's cringing at somebody saying, gee, damn. Yeah, I am, I am. I, I'm, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's, and by everywhere, I mean, it's just, I don't know. Normies are saying it. They're saying it on TV now. They're saying it in movies now. They're saying it everywhere now. I was just, I just pulled up my phone, and I just see it. I just, I, I, I just, I feel like I see it every day. Someone types it out, or a somewhat faggy, fag, retarded in Hollywood types it out, writes it out. I just pull on my phone right now, of a, a review for uh, Beetlejuice 2 by Fandango. And you're like, you're thinking, okay, well, Fandango is a, a normal ish company. They're not going to say it. Oh, they say it. Fandango is a movie company. They sell movie tickets. And what do they write on their ad? They write, Beetlejuice 2, give this demon a G damn Oscar already. That's the title of their article for their Beetlejuice 2 review from Fandango. And. Does anybody think about that word? I feel like that's the worst thing you can say in the world is G damn. Because that's just how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. People who say that, dude, I I would not I would not want to say that. I don't I don't even really have trouble saying that. Um I have trouble saying other words like the N-word and stuff. But thankfully, I don't really have trouble with saying G damn. Like, I, I've never, I, I don't think I really say that one very often or definitely not so much anymore. Maybe I used to when I was a teenager, though. I get pretty close, though. When I'm losing at games, I do say a gosh darn or even a gosh damn or a god. Or no, I say gosh darn it or something. But yeah, it is hard to not say it a little bit. But then I just end up with the gosh darn it. Or the N-word. The N-word's perfect. You can use that any time. Only problem with that is if you yell the N-word at your house like I do, your neighbors and your relatives start thinking you're a little bit off your rocker because they're thinking, what What the heck? This guy's yelling the N-word? What the heck? We're letting this guy stay at our house? Excuse me? Which I, I get that, I guess. Whatever. But to me, it's that word is not even, not even bad compared to G-Dam. People using that word. Because I told you guys the N-word comes from Hebrew. It means plague. And, uh, I mean, they are kind of a plague on the earth. I mean, um, 
And that's why that word is the way it is. Um, I'm not going to go into that legally. I can't say any more. Uh, and that's all very, you know, mysti mystical and take that as you, as it will. But, um, I mean, I think everybody knows that, right? But <sighs> anyways, have you guys noticed that? Have you guys noticed that everyone online is seeing, saying G damn now and all the Hollywood freaks in their movies are all putting that word into their movies and even into their movie trailers for like kids and stuff and youngsters they're like ah oh, and meat canyon says it all these youtubers say it. i know meat canyon's an atheist but all these youtubers say it and it's like man i i follow i have so many accounts that i follow on twitter because i just followed like a th like thousands of accounts when i started because I thought I would get more uh, people to follow back or something. And then now my Twitter feed is filled with people who post trans uh, comics, trans cartoons, gay shit, uh, coomer, gooner shit. So now every day I'm unfollowing people, blocking people. And I'm like amazed. Because all I did was, I think, what did I do? I think I just followed like, I I followed like, a thousand random accounts, probably like probably like more like two or three thousand, and I'm amazed by how many of those random accounts are all pro LGBZ. All these people are brainwashed cucks in the world, and it's really sad and messed up because they're gonna end up uh, blah 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 blah. I mean, this world, dude. We we need to prepare for like uh, freaking gay shit that's coming that could come. Um, we need to. I don't know, we need to like, uh, we need to like just have a farm of crickets and then uh, we have our own food supply. Crickets are pretty gross, you know, people, you, you can use bunnies or squirrels or rats. Whatever animal you feel comfortable uh, farming and eating, I guess a lot of people would say chickens, right? Yeah, you know what, chickens are actually pretty pretty good idea. We should just start our own chicken farms, every one of us. And then we have our own eggs and chickens we can eat every day, ish, that we want. And then all you have to do is learn how to cook your own chicken and your own eggs. Actually, eggs are easy. You know what? That's what I need to do. I need to get some chickens. My neighbors have chickens. I'm not kidding. Um, and then, boom, you have free eggs every day. And then that's your food supply. And then all you have to do besides that is make a well, which isn't that hard, probably. You just dig a well thing with a hammer and a metal pipe. And you put it in the ground, 50, uh, 25 feet, 50 feet, th with 30 feet. It's like 25 feet. You just hammer with a sledgehammer a metal pipe into the ground, 25 feet. You have to stack the metal pipes on top of each other. And then, boom, you basically have a well. And then you have water. So then you have water. And you have eggs. So if you have your own water and you have your own eggs and you're ready to go. You're all you're all set to go, cause well, I think what's gonna happen is they're gonna say, look, you gotta have this gay ass brain microchip inserted into your own cock if you want to eat at the grocery store now. I don't know when they're gonna start doing that, but I feel like they're gonna start doing that soon. And by soon, I mean by like 2030. And you know, I go to the grocery store all the time to eat. I don't grow my own food, so I'm gonna be screwed, cause I ain't taking no gay ass brain chip. Sorry, Elon Musk. Suck my dick, Musk. Suck my giant dick, Elon Musk. Because I'm not going to take your faggoty brain chip. I'm not going to put it into my uh, penis or my head. Or my wrist. Sorry, sorry, Elon Musk. I'm not doing that. Sorry, Jimbo Gates, Billy Boy Gates, Microsoft, fucking what a blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to say you can't eat at the grocery store if you don't have the penis chip. Dude, you know, it's like... Then what's going to happen? All the people who don't have chips, they're going to have to start looting the grocery stores. And I don't even have melanin in my skin. And I'm going to have to end up looting a grocery store because I refuse to get a penis chip. Are you kidding me, Mr. Musk? But that's what it's coming. That's what it might come down to. You know, that's what I think about. About what it, what it might come down to. 
And what you guys can write in the comments, what you guys think it will, it, what what you guys think will happen in the future. Um, just write in the comments what you guys think. Uh, or you know, maybe our food will just keep getting more and more processed and poisoned, and we'll be all dead in uh, two months. Because our food is already processed. Cereal is like all the all the crap that they don't want. They put and they turn it into cereal. And look, I eat hot dogs. I mean, I eat kosher hot dogs, but I still eat hot dogs. And hot dogs are like all the scraps and all the crap from um, the cows or whatever animals. And then they just make them into hot dogs. But yes, they do taste good. But um, that's exactly the same with cereal. They take all the crap from the oats or whatever, and then they turn it into cereal. It's all... And then they feed it to people, and people eat cereal, and it's just gross cra crap. And um, it's all the things they don't want. They just turn into cereal. And, um, you know, the movie Coraline, uh, it's a good movie. I saw it in theaters when I was like, when I was 17. I might have been 16. I was either 17 or 16 or 18 at I think I was 17 when I saw Coraline in theaters. It's a puppet movie. And she goes to the other dimension and meets her stepmom, which is her uh, demonic uh, um, uh, other dimensional mom. Help, stepmom. I got stuck in the washing machine again. She goes to the other, dim <laughs> goes to the other dimension. And... <laughs> Only go only coomers and gooners are gonna get that joke, and she gets uh, stuck in the washing machine. She goes to the she gets she goes to the other dimension, and her stepmom sa says, "Oh, we make all of our food out of out of rat crap." I'm not kidding. She says we make our food out of rat crap, crap that comes out of rats' butts. What do you guys think that our current food is actually made out of rat crap as well? Just like in the movie Coraline, write in the comments below if you think yes. I think our our food is made out of rat crap. Yes, I think our food is made out of human beings, and they're making all of us cannibals subconsciously through our food by putting pieces of humans in our food that go missing every day. Or yes, I just think it's made out of rat crap, and they feed us rat crap. Write in the comments what you think is secretly in the food. That they don't put in the ingredient list. Is it humans? Is it embryos? Is it rat crap? Uh, is it uh, sugar? Blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. You know, Coraline was, Coraline was a very deep movie. And what else was a fun movie? It was um, James and the Giant Peach. You know, I like a girl with a giant peach. Oh, that's a joke again. But No, actually I do, but... Um, that was a creepy movie, too. They were both creepy movies. They got that Tim Burton style to them. I don't, I don't know if they were made by Tim Burton. They might have been. I don't, I don't remember if they were. But they, they got that, that spookiness to them. They, uh, a stop motion in general can look pretty freaking creepy, though. You know, I think. Hello. It is now Saturday, as of nine minutes ago. I have not very good news. Uh, I um, I didn't stop at a stop sign long enough, and I got a ticket tonight by a policeman. Um, stop sign tickets are usually about $272. Um, I'm going to maybe try to contest it online otherwise you have to show up in court and I don't want to drive to a court I don't know how far the court is but I don't really want to drive to a court and show up in court um I might be fucked um excuse me language might be screwed out of nearly three hundred dollars and I'm already pretty broke and uh this is really not good because I am already barely affording my rent. Um, I mean, I'm affording my rent, but I'm not able to save up any money, really. So any money that I do use, it's not good because then that means I won't be able to pay the rent. Um, so that's not good. So, um, yeah, 
I, I should have stopped at the stop sign longer, I guess. Um, hopefully I can contest it online, and I don't have to go to court, but we'll see what happens. We'll see how that goes. Um, I think it's my first ticket ever, and I've been driving for over 10 years, but this is what you get for driving and going to work, is that you have to pay uh, $300 tickets for not stopping long enough or something. Driving is a scam. Jobs are a scam. This society is a faggot scam. My reward for driving to work is a $300 ticket. So, not good. Not good. I uh, gotta figure out something, maybe. Other bad news. Last night on my shift, uh, demonically possessed uh, homeless criminals and thieves stole four people's bikes not super far away from where I'm parked at the hotel near the bike area so tonight I, of course I'm parking uh, where I can see the bikes I'm parked about you know a hundred feet or whatever or 200 feet who even knows how much of how big a foot is anymore but you know women say the average is six inches maybe it's 200 inches I'm parked 200 feet away from the bikes. I can see the bikes pretty well. What these deranged f f criminals did is they jumped the large fence, climbed it. It's a glass fence. They had bolt cutters. They cut the bikes off the locks, and they threw the bikes over the six or seven foot fences, and then they jumped back over the fences. They said this, they said this is all on video. They said it was on my shift. The companies, they said the company's watching my every move now, so they might fire me any day now because of people stole bikes on my shift in a very deranged, disgusting, wild way. And I didn't see it, and who knows if I would have done anything anyways, but I have a flashlight, so if I see them do it tonight, I'm going to shine a flashlight on them. Hopefully I don't get shot and killed tonight by a bunch of deranged uh, psycho uh, nigger criminals, basically. It's very unfortunate that there's a lot of homeless in this area, kind of, by the creek and by the trees. And that's where they live and they sleep and they hide, is in those trees and stuff. And now uh, they're, they're terrorizing this place uh, as the weeks go on, because this is a newly built uh, complex. Uh, there's a woman here walking her dog and she was staring at me for five minutes straight. It was extremely unnerving and creepy. Probably a demonic possession attack against me, I'm guessing. I don't know what else it would be. It's very bizarre behavior from an adult female. Very, very strange and creepy behavior. And yes, I prayed that I would have a safe drive tonight, and I got a ticket, and then I got stuck in traffic, so I got to work 23 minutes late. I doubt the company is going to be very happy about that either. And then I had this weird stuff happen with the bikes last night. Now the woman's staring... This has been a very chaotic night. Um, it's definitely not, not good. Definitely not a good. Um, and to top it all off, it's hot as hell. It's summertime. I don't know where you guys are, but where I am, it's hot as hell. It's hotter than hell, probably. It's almost as hot as hell. It's very hot. Uh, so, um, that's... Pretty much all I have to say right now. I just got to work an hour ago. Well, around about an hour ago or so. But, um, we'll see what happens. They're watching, the company's watching me, I guess. That's what they said. You know, they they got my eye, they got their eye on me. Because they, whatever, they think I'm not doing a great job or something. Which I'm not. I don't take jobs very seriously. I think they're gay and retarded, of course. But I do a, I do some sort of job, is what. You could argue, I suppose. I'm a little bit stressed, maybe, about the ticket, the staring woman, the bike, the bike homeless nigger, transient criminal thieves that are everywhere in this demonic realm, the sinner thieves everywhere. There's nothing but thieves everywhere you go. No, I, I don't know. It's just been a case. It's just been a, um, it's been a strange, uh, different sort of night tonight. My coworker didn't seem very pleased, of course, that I was late and that my shift stuff is happening on my shift and blah, 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 blah. 
And I imagine the company's not super pleased either. Um, we'll see if they threaten to write me up again. If I get written up a few more times, I think they will fire me at least two or three more times. <laughs> I think I was probably unjustly written up the first time for missing calls on a broken phone. Not my phone, the work phone, of course. They still wrote me up for that, even though the phone is retarded. So, it's, uh, it's strange. If I get fired or whatever, that's fine. I don't care. I'll try to find a different job, I guess, but... Um, the problem is the rent. I'm already sick of this society and the society of money and rent and stuff. So perhaps I really should just become a transient uh, car living person. But of course I'm, I would never become a thief like these freaks out here that steal from people. That's a huge uh, sin to steal from people. And uh, I don't know, they should be ashamed. I don't know what else to say. It's disgusting. Um, rich people steal people's money too, right? But uh, they have mansions and stuff. So I don't know what their excuse is, right? The stock market, Wall Street people stealing money all the time, right? Bankers, taxes, our government, all thieves and all stealing fags, right? But they don't get any... Any repercussion from the public, very much, right? Our, uh, our Jeevermint has gone rogue big time, pretty much. The second Amundment is there for our protection to keep us protected from a rogue Jeevermint government. Um, so I think all of us should be calmed uh, ASAP. And of course I'm not, but I think I think we all should be, you know. Um, it's just been a hell of a night it was hot all day today man until the sun went down and it got maybe a tiny bit more bearable but it was, it's hard to get out of bed when it's 95 or 97 degrees it's, it, it feels like the heat is pushing my body into the, the bed like maybe I should buy an air conditioner right in the comments if you think I should what the heck just for the room, just for my room. I think it's probably a good idea. But I hate the heat. I'm sorry, I cannot stand the heat. It's very, very hot. Um, yeah. If I'm not able to pay my rent and stuff, then it's not good, you know? Um, so, it's not good. Yes, I'm being charged way too much rent by my family, but um, still barely kind of paying it. Can't save any money up. Stuck in a position. Locked in a position. Write in the comments if you feel like you're stuck or locked in a certain life position right now. Maybe some of you feel that way. Um... <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, just a, sh just a shitty night, I guess. So, I think the Sabbath ends, I think it's Thursday night to Friday night, so it might be over now. So, uh, when the Sabbath ends, then, um, the Shekinah, the holiness, kind of leaves this area. And then we lose a lot of blessings, I feel like, when she's not around helping us out Thursday to Friday nights. Uh, that's Jewish stuff. Anyways, hopefully you guys are doing good. But uh, what a total joke. You know, driving, jobs, tickets. It's, it's all just, it's just so stupid. It's all just so cringe, you know. It's all so cringe. This whole world, this society, it just... Seems so, so stupid. Why would someone, why would anyone want to continue this sham or live in this sham or be a part of this sham? It's just all such a, just feels like such a sham. Anyway. Even in my car it feels hot as hell and it's, it's almost 12.30 midnight. 12.30 p.m. a.m. And it's still hot as hell in my car. That's crazy.
I can't wear this security jacket in here because it's too hot, but I only work two days a week. And one of the reasons for doing that is because I expect less bad problems to happen on my shifts if I'm only working 16 hours for an entire week. And what happens somehow during my shift, two, you know, a two out of seven chance, the evil demonically possessed faggot transient homeless people from the trees come and steal four bikes and throw them over a big wall on my shift a two out of seven chance i barely work i barely work because i expect less problems if i if i'm barely at the work location and what happens a problem what are the chances of that a problem on my shift they're low chances and yet it happened What's the what's the meaning behind this? What's going on here? What's happening here? Very unfortunate. Very yeah. I uh I I don't know. I I I'm already th too thin-skinned for this disgusting realm society. And um I don't know. I'm just a, maybe I'm just a little grumpy or something about the ticket. I'm probably just grumpy about stuff. I can't believe we're both here in this world and we have to exist and live and survive here for several more years. We have to survive for several more years. And it's hard enough to survive here sometimes. And we're young. We're not even old faggots yet. We're not even 85 years old yet. And some sometimes it's still even difficult to survive here even though we're not even 85 or 30 years old we're not even that old thankfully we're like halfway through our lives if you're in your 30s you're probably halfway through your life so we don't have much more to go and i don't feel like trying very hard for the rest of my other my the last half of my life i tried enough for the first half public school was hell you're stuck in that for 18 years i did enough trying during that time it was all disgusting hell torture torment fag shit and now for the last half of my life, I got a ticket. What the heck? It's just crazy because I, I pray every day to the correct God. And I pray over every single meal that I have. I pray over every single piece of food that I eat. Every single one. I pray over every single meal that I have. And I pray every day and still some 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 bad some weird still some unfortunate stuff comes my way sometimes. It's just it's just weird. When um, when Noah was in the whale's the beast's uh, stomach, he prayed to God, and God said, "Why are you praying to me?" The secret here is that Noah was praying to the wrong Sephiroth of a uh, Sephirot of God. He was praying to a higher one when he should have been praying to the Malkuth Sephiro. Probably, I think that's the secret of that verse. Uh, nonetheless, um, what a terrible night for a curse to quote Transyl uh, Transylvania, I mean Castlevania, I mean Transvestitevania, I mean Metroidvania. What a terrible night for a curse. You know, the day is cringe enough as it is with, with the, with the heat right now because of how hot it is. And... Besides the unbearable heat, I probably would have had a, a decent day today until, and this is where it all went downhill, until I got in my car and drove to work. The two big issues with that, that made me have a bad day today, is the ticket, the freeway traffic, and the work. Those three things are what... ruined my day. Those are the three, three things I should be cutting out of my life completely. Driving, working, 
That's pretty much it. Those two things. If you can cut those two things out of your life and live a normal life, blessed are you. Bless you. Because it's it's probably not even worth it. I, I don't even make any money. I, ha I can barely even pay the rent. What's the even point of me having a job and going to work? It's all pointless, faggot, nonsense, bullshit, shit. Sorry. It's just such a joke. I'm so angry I could yell almost. I could yell. I'm 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 not I'm not that angry, but I'm like a little I am a I am I could see myself yelling. But I'm not I don't think I'm super angry right now. But I could see myself yelling to get some stress out or to get the, some of the anger out. I don't know if you guys do that, but sometimes I yell if I get if I have a really bad day, I'll I'll yell in the car or I'll yell, probably yell, yeah, probably yell in the car or something or yell in my room, I guess, probably in the car. And I've had a lot of bad days where I, I'll yell in the car because um, for me, that helps to get some of the anger out. So I don't know if you guys have ever done that or tried that. Let me know in the comments if you guys are also old yellers, right in the comments. Now it's time to have a snuggle with my very best friend in the whole wide world. You. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could come over. See you soon. Bye. the moon. <laughs>